And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I am your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Listen, we are back. Episode 163 of the show. Let's go ahead and double check that because I don't know the length of this show. Maybe it'll end today. (laughs) Maybe it'll end next week. Yep. 163. We are here. We are Pride Month. Get used to it. I was going to say we are queer. Um, I'm not, but uh, welcome to that world. (laughs) I don't know why I got very specific there. What's going on? (laughs) Not much. I had something I wanted to mention, but I just can't can't remember. I can't remember what I was talking about. Uh, Today, I bought Kingdom Hearts 3. It was $8. I said, why not? Went to Best Buy to do the curbside pickup, picked it up, drove it right back to my house. That's the highlight of my day. Let's see what else I did. (laughs) Oh, my Wall Street Journal subscription runs out tomorrow or today at the time you're listening to this. And uh, I got a new watch. That's pretty much it. (laughs) That's it. That's all the things coming in. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I I don't know if I mentioned this. My uh, last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago now. My my smartwatch, my Garmin VivoActive HR, the screen popped off. Second one, second this is the second time I had to replace it. Uh, so they didn't have. They said, "Do you want to buy a refurbished one, or do you want to buy uh, just the newer version of the watch?" Which is now the newer version came out a couple of months ago, uh, and it's the fourth iteration. And I had the second iteration. No, I had the first iteration. Excuse me. So I've had that watch for a long time. And then I said, you know what? I'll just, I'll just, uh, they said they're going to give me 50% off. So I said, all right, I'll buy it. And then they said, all right, you owe us $196. <laughs> and I went, excuse me. <laughs> and I said, all right, I don't have $200, uh, but I bought it anyway. And it should be arriving in the mail and UPS tomorrow. So hopefully that comes. And by the time I get off work, I should drive back here. And it'll be within my grasp. Until then, I have this uh, neat little watch that I was gifted uh, by a family member. And I'm excited to... I'm sorry, I just felt the vibration. I'm just... I'm excited to... uh, I've been wearing it. It's kind of like a traveler's watch. It's a citizen... uh, It's an eco-drive styled watch. Something. And it's got a barometer and climbing altitudes and uh north not north uh, what's it called it, it, it finds the it finds the magnetism in the earth it can find the magnetism in the earth uh, as you can see if you're watching the video i'm wearing a white shirt no tie at all buttoned halfway down look if i look good i gotta flaunt it listen let's get right into this let's get right into this we got some stuff coming up like I said, this is my last week having Wall Street Journal for a little bit because I'll be darned if I'm paying $20 a month for that, uh, especially now that I have YouTube TV, which is wonderful. You never know what you miss until you miss actually having cable. Like a, a, get a trial of Hulu with live TV or YouTube TV or Philo or uh, Sling or whatever floats your boat and then just... It's those, it's the days or the times, the hours when you just want to put something on and not pay attention to it, just throwing on HD TV. Now you can easily go to Hulu and find an HD TV show and just watch episodes of that, but it's not the same, you know, just throwing something on, sitting down on the couch, picking up the switch, playing Pokemon sword, <laughs> finally uh, getting past the first gym challenge. That's what they call them now. Missions and challenges and all that stuff. Dynamax, learning how to Dynamax for the first time and just like sitting there and just having it on in the background, not even paying attention or turning on Cartoon Network and and watching uh, five hours of Teen Titans Go Street because <laughs> that's all they play now. It's crazy. It's been like that for a minute. Speaking of things to watch, this comes from the Wall Street Journal written by Ann Steele, Spotify Warner Brothers partner to create DC superhero, supervillain podcast. So Spotify has really been doubling down on its, uh, I'm going to stop, I'm not going to say this word ironically, but content gain 
recently and it is doing a good job. Um, trying to become the one stop shop. Did I say that right? One stop shop. One, one stop shop. Okay. <laughs> trying to become the one stop shop for all things that are, uh, I'm trying to turn myself up in the monitors here. Cause I could not hear myself <laughs> trying to become the one stop shop for all things that are audio oral oral fixation. Trying to get you down on that. So, Spider Superman, Spider Man, <laughs> Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are all going to have their own podcast. Maybe who knows? We don't know these things. Uh, Warner Brothers, which is now Warner Media, guys, a unit of AT and T Inc., will develop and produce the programming in collaboration with Spotify, which will market, advertise, and distribute the shows exclusively on its platform. The companies will uh, base narratives on existing characters, such as Harley Quinn and the Joker, from Warner Brothers in DC. And we'll also uh, work to create new and original material. The podcast could be used as a testing ground for new film and TV concepts, according to a person familiar with the matter. Yeah, of course, we're going to test out stories there. That makes much more sense. Uh, This is a very early early this week. HBO Max announced, which is part of the Warner family, announced that it's going to have HBO Max branded DC comics. (laughs) I got a I did not read the story. And. Cause it looks stupid, <laughs> but here's something from, you know what? I'll go ahead and choose something that is, uh, auditorialized, editorialized. Excuse me. No, no, no. You know, no, I'll choose the, I'll choose the verge. Cause I like the verge. The verge is a good publication as is, uh, web, uh, and gadget. HBO, this is, uh, this comes from Julia Alexander over there at the verge, my good friend, AT&T turned HBO max into a superhero with a comic book. So they have these, Go look it up. The purple HBO Max branding <laughs> on top of comic books featuring characters that are colored as the HBO Max fighting characters like that, you know, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the brand of this. So we'll, we'll discover this together. Uh, a new comic book launched by DC Comics in partnership with Warner Media. It's called To the Max and it's quote will feature stories about ordinary people achieving their maximum potential when they transform into extraordinary superheroes with the help of another new character, Max, the dog (laughs) Warner media phrases the new comic book as a partnership in the press release, but Warner media owns DC comics and AT&T owns Warner media. (laughs) Make it less. So, so far they've announced three things, three stories. This is so stupid (laughs) to the max Hector. When a school teacher finds a mysterious device, it sends him flying into an incredible outer space rescue mission. Brian, and, a, and then they have one called Brian about a scuba instructor and Olivia about a down on her luck stand up comic is all that stands between her audience and a gun toting criminals who plan to rob a Las Vegas casino. Oh my jeez. Okay. Why these things don't need to be uh, brands and live next to one another. Although it is interesting that, uh, there's going to be, we, we saw the trailer for, or not a trailer. We saw a clip of, uh, uh, Zack Snyder's justice league, uh, remake or redo that came out today. Uh, but the, the, listen, Warner, if you're listening to me, uh, a hire me, I'm, I, I'm very low. <laughs> I will lowball you <laughs> and B <laughs> you don't need this. I, I don't do, I do the podcasting thing. I guess kind of makes sense. The comics don't make sense whatsoever. That's, that's something that does not need to be done, but the podcasting thing kind of makes sense uh, in the way that there was a master chief, a halo branded podcast that came out maybe five years ago. And it was in the same vein as serial because serial was popular and serial did popularize podcasts for some reason. Uh, But it, it was, it was in the same vein as serial as, you know, it was a host who I believe was Colby, who's played by Colby Smol, voiced by Colby Smolders. And she was trying to find out the reason why the Spartan program. I don't know. I don't remember the whole thing. Uh, but that definitely, I mean, it's the comics make no sense. But this, this, this Spotify thing, I don't know what they're trying to get a. Oh, you know what? Stitcher. Stitcher has Marvel podcasts and they have a Wolverine podcast. I believe that was all the rage it's called wolverine 
the lost trail and it's been and it's still ongoing it's got two seasons and uh it features a lot of um voice talent and it's a stitcher premium only podcast you can only get on stitcher premium uh, i believe something that not many people subscribe to but (laughs) uh richard armitage was in it uh bill irwin scott adsit bob balaban a lot of white guys guys and they all played different characters uh gambit was in it He's played by Bill Heck and, uh, and then of course Wolverine himself, but it's all, this is all an oral thing. So it, uh, oral as an AU, spell it the rest <laughs> and the rest. Ah, another reference to Gilligan's Island <laughs> to the six people that know the reference from two episodes ago. Interesting. So then they're going to be, they're going to make a different, they're going to, there's, there's going to be an, a, a podcast adaptation of, the comic book Marvels that's about the fantastic four and Galactus. So, I mean, these, these exist, these exist. And, uh, the, you know, podcasting is a big thing. And if you can attach these giant names, Superman, Wolverine with, with something that's easy and free to get into, um, cause pod, you can still listen to the podcast without Stitcher premium, uh, on the Stitcher premium platform. So, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a decent move, but if you can attach that stuff, attach those big names, uh, and then you can also get bigger advertisers. So those big names are great. Uh, and that's how they, that's how they drag those in. Uh, I'm not gonna listen to it. <laughs> I don't know if many people will, but if the Wolverine podcast can, can last for two years, then surely there's a niche for this. There's a niche for everything. Not, not a C plus comedy, apparently. <laughs> And then speaking of Warner Media, we'll continue on with this. We finally have an explanation of what's going to happen with H- with one of the HBO streaming apps. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the HBO streaming apps. So this comes from Variety written by I'm Whistling. This comes from Variety written by Todd Spangler. Warner Media is going to rebrand HBO Now as HBO. Wait. We'll phase out HBO Go. So HBO Go is the app, the original app. That was launched in 2010, I believe, as a way to watch HBO if you have a cable provider. Four years later, HBO Now was released as a way to watch HBO without a cable provider. Cut to <laughs> smash cut to two weeks, uh, three weeks ago or a month ago. Who knows? I've already uh, yeah, I already paid for a month. So uh, a month ago, a month and some change. <laughs> HBO Max is released. It's a way to watch HBO stuff if you have a cable provider or if you don't have a cable provider, but also some more HBO stuff. <laughs> so Warner Media is trying to clean up the confusion. This was announced last Friday, I believe, as soon as I had launched this episode. The separate HBO Max is still everything is the same. Why isn't everything on HBO Max, you might ask? It's because Amazon and Roku have yet to cut deals with Warner Media. The deals will come eventually. However, until then, HBO Now has to exist as HBO. So the fact that they're going to phase out HBO Go right now, I don't know when, but it's, you know, as I can only assume as soon as possible means that, and then they're going to rebrand HBO Now as HBO, means that they are ready to just retire the that moniker and just put everything on HBO Max. The yeah, HBO Go is 10 years old. Holy crap. <laughs> uh so yeah, you can basically get HBO Max on everything, with the exception of a Fire Stick or a Roku streaming stick. So there's that. There, there are those things that we finally need that we finally got the answer to. It's great that Warner's doing this. Probably should try a little bit harder. If if you under if you know that you're gonna rebrand <laughs> one app for just a little bit, why have it in the first place? My I wonder if they have uh, a splash screen on the HBO Go app that says, "Hey, go download HBO Max, watch Love Life, Doom Patrol, Looney Tunes." <laughs> Two of those I've watched, not Love Life. Listen, let's take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about some stuff. And we're back. Oh, let me give you a little uh, demonstration of what just happened. Demonstration. I'm not going to get up from this spot. Uh, I get up 
to turn off the one camera that needs to be turned off. And it's a DSLR, very old DSLR. I've had issues with before. Now the mini, the HDI, HDMI uh, mini connector is all types of not connecting. And so I, I press the stop record button and the screen, the, the monitor goes black on the, the TV I use to my stage, to camera right, to stage right, to camera right. And it's not working. This happened before I set this up. My hair is too nappy for this. I can't deal. I can't deal with this camera. <laughs> my hair is very uh, kinky right now. I need a haircut. My barber, uh, Georgia is open back up for some ungodly reason. Georgia is open back up. Oh yeah. That sounds nice and buttery smooth. Georgia is open back up, uh, from, from, from the pandemic. And my barber sends an email out. Reputable, reputable guy sends an email out and says, uh, we are opening back up. This is weeks ago. We're opening back up, but we're going to put a premium charge on all haircuts. So all adult haircuts have jumped from $30 to 50. You have to wear a mask when you come inside. Uh, you have to fit in some other parameters, but those are the two things. I understand wearing a mask. I'm not paying $50 for a haircut. <laughs> That's ridiculous. As much as I need a fade and to cut some split ends up top, it's, uh, it's not happening. That's not going to happen. Speaking of things that aren't going to happen anymore, blackface isn't happening on British television. This comes from the New York times written by Alex Marshall. From the London Bureau of the New York Times. So there's been a reckoning with blackface in, uh, I guess, in media. Uh, There, you know, Ralph Northam, Ralph Nathan, Ralph Northam, Virginia governor, I believe, was caught. Justin Trudeau had some blackface. And these are all from the past. But now, Adam uh, Rappaport had a brownface. And a a bunch of people have had, have painted their faces which I understand. But now the British television is, is, is just being uh, raked over the coals because a bunch of their shows have featured blackface. And for years to the credit of black people all around England, or excuse me, the UK have been saying that shows like Bo Selecta and uh, faulty towers have all had Blackface, blackface uh, sketches, not skits or sketches. It's it's not a skit. You're not a four year old child at a d- d- Christmas pageant. It's a sketch. <laughs> Bo Selecta is one of is one of a host of once popular British comedy shows that have been pulled from streaming services here this week in London, including Netflix and the BBC's iPlayer, because they include blackface or racial slurs, some from as recently as 2010. Shows including The Mighty Boosh, Little Britain, and The League of Gentlemen have all had blackface. And this uh this is this has been this has been something that's happened for uh obviously since the seventies, since late seventies and eighties. Uh oh, that camera's about to die. That's the problem. <laughs> um there have there uh, I mean uh, blackface is just uh crazy bad over there. Um Gina Yashir, a British comedian who is also uh, executive produces the CBS show, uh, and it is a very funny show. Bob Hart's Abishola said that it shouldn't have taken George Floyd's killing and the global response to make people rethink blackface. Black comedians have obviously been talking about this for years. There's a show called Little Britain, created by Matt Lucas and David Williams. Matt Lucas is now co-hosting The Great British Bake Off uh, that, that featured a sketch about uh, blackface. With blackface, excuse me. And then uh, the Great British Baking Show. That's what the show's called. And then uh, the other host of the Great British Baking Show, Noel Fielding. Noel Fielding. He appeared as a character called the Spirit of Jazz in the Mighty Boosh, in one Mighty Boosh sketch, wearing dreadlocks and blackface. Now, some of these shows have not been taken down entirely. Some of them have. Um, but it's it's a strange reckoning that uh that is happening now um especially at a, at a time when you know it's it seems as though 
that almost every, like everybody's just going for things that they've had in their back pocket, uh, which doesn't make sense. You should just, if something bothers you, just go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> Uh, but but it seems that you know everybody except for John Cleese, who 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 was a star of the uh, Faulty Towers, uh, seems to be sympathetic about this and say, yeah, take our shows down. It, like we we should not have done it. We're sorry. That was a bad idea. But John Cleese came out and he's uh, very mad that that the Faulty Towers has been taken down. Uh, also, John Cleese, not a good person. Also, I'll go on record saying that uh, he said. He he just Google uh, his past interaction with uh, Nicole Byer um, and uh, uh, you'll find out he's a, a giant POS, which stands for a piece of S word. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clean show. So it's good that we're, we're doing this, but I I want to get to the to a point um, that might be a little bit controversial. It's okay to, and so Megan and Ram, all right, before I get to that, Megan and Ram got in trouble, Amram, excuse me, uh, Megan Amram, oh, Megan Amram tweets, <laughs> that's the first thing that comes up on Google, uh, Megan got in trouble yesterday, or earlier this week, because of some past offensive tweets, uh, and some of them were vi- were bad against the, uh, uh, against the Asian people. Um, and then, you know, other, others were just bad comedy. And I, and I think it's important not being a comedian myself. Cause I'm not, my therapist says I am, I'm not <laughs> just a person who interviews comedians. Uh, but the difference between, you know, racism, which was, um, the guy that was on that, that, uh, was hired for SNL then fired immediately. And I already forgot his name. Uh, which is him, and then bad jokes, which we can, const- which Megan's work construed as. I'll de- I'm not saying that all of them were racist, were not racist, but I'm saying that just some of them were, uh, were not racist. They were just very, very bad jokes. Um, and every comedian has that, and you know she's very, she's very vocal. Uh, and I guess this is coming off as a defense, <laughs> but and, and, and these tweets are from 2012 and 2013 because it's Twitter, you know, tweet existence since 2008. Uh, but the difference is she's been very vocal uh, within within the same time frame of, you know, supporting people of color and women and, uh, and trans and, and all that type and all that stuff. Um, I just named three problem areas and then <laughs> oh, women, people of color, trans, that's it. <laughs> the rest <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> uh, but let me read you some of these tweets. She, there's one tweet that said, uh, if I had a time machine, I go back in time and kill Hitler and all the Jews and gypsies and gay people, which he sh- and gypsies is bolded. It makes it seem like this person, uh, on Twitter who called her out, um, found this stuff and, uh, and, and was just typing like, you know, just typed in every slur she could, like this person could, uh, gypsies, uh, Asians, you know, or not slur, but every type of thing she could. Uh, and then here, and then here's a, here's a more racist joke, which I'm not going to say out loud. I'm not going to say that out loud. <laughs> then the rest are racist, but some of them are very, just bad. <laughs> some of them are just very bad. Uh, and so we just, I think we just need to, as long as you're apologetic, as long as you understand what you did, um, you, I think, you know, Kevin Hart had had jokes with uh, gay slurs in them, and he was apologetic. He's like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry," but people, of course, didn't take his uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, everything is is different. We got to be much more careful about who we hurt, because hurting people is wrong, and that's not a joke. Hurting people is wrong. I will never, I will never purposely make a joke to hurt somebody. I don't need to. It's, it's stupid because I don't want somebody to hurt me. All right. Just got way too serious. Uh, Bust for poop. Okay, so this next one, this final story has come from the New York Times. Upright Citizens Brigade to overhaul its leadership. So Amy Poehler, Matt Besser, Ian Roberts, and uh, Matt Walsh, they're going to basically take a step back from the UCB. So UCB has been having a bit of trouble lately. Uh, they co- they closed a theater, a couple of theaters. They just pulled out of New York, essentially, uh, a, a couple of months ago. and And now... After some allegations at a, another improv or with another improv organization, 
uh, the UCB4 are basically saying, look, we are going to make a new board of, quote, diverse individuals. And they're going to just basically remake UCB in the vein of what it is today, which is a bunch of people of any creed, of any gender, of any race, just wanting to do comedy, do comedy sketches, not skits, sketches. Okay, so they emailed, they sent out an email last Saturday, uh, just basically highlighting what they're going to do. And this is all basically brought on with the help of a woman named Keisha Zoller, who I have interviewed. And if you go look up her interview with uh, her husband uh, from, I think, like four years ago at this point or five years ago at this point. Yeah, 2015, something like that. She wrote on Twitter that she was... I. Uh, a diversity coordinator. She, and she didn't really name UCB, but you know, if you know Keisha, then you know it's UCB, but she was a diversity coordinator and she was never paid in money. She was paid in, I believe remembering, cause I looked at the, there's a Twitter thread. She's paid in like classes and, and stuff like that, <laughs> which classes are expensive, but she's a teacher and she's a diversity coordinator. She really doesn't need classes. Um, but she's not the first person to speak out about UCB's payment practices, which you can click through on that article. Uh, the emails also found that, the proposed new board would review the company's audition and hiring practices and that UCB would maintain a system of anonymous reporting of uh, complaints related to race, sexual orientation, and safety. Safety. So we don't know what's going to happen with Polar, Besser, Roberts, and Walsh. But it's safe to say that they're just going to have less of a presence, uh, probably even less than they already have. <laughs> No, uh, you know what? I, I can I understand if uh, Besser and Roberts were mostly involved with the day to day operations. I mean, I, Matt Besser is probably, you know, there every single day handling uh, most things. But uh, Amy and and uh, Walsh, they're very busy working actors. And um, I can't imagine that they had a say in everything. But I'm glad that they're all stepping up now uh, to get ahead of this stuff. Because they know that, you know, they didn't really foster. It's, you know, 20 years ago, UCB was the king of kings when it came to sketch. And now there's so many different schools of thoughts. And and you can't say one, like back then you could say this one thing is right. And this is how you do it. This is how you do sketch. But now it's, there's so many different ways to do comedy that you can't just, and, and they've even showcased that with the UCB show over there on, um, See so when that before that got canceled and and now it's somewhere. So this all came to light, uh, especially after this comes from Deadline. SNL's Chris Reds, uh, Veep's Sam Richardson, among Second City alum, demanding investigation into comedy institutions, race, uh, racism, and sexual misconduct allegations. So Second City CEO Andrew Alexander stepped down because. He had instilled institutional racism when he was auditioning, when, when the company was organization was auditioning people and, and, uh, and putting, you know, people on touring companies and all that stuff. And now a bunch of famous black people who worked, who did second city stuff, who took the classes, who, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to say this, but, but, but paid their dues essentially. And they weren't able to, go any higher or, you know, pay tribute like the rest of their uh, white uh, coworkers or co co people. After last week's resignation of uh, Alexander over accusations of institutional racism, the group of 19 and uh, former current and former second city associates have signed an open letter accusing the improv company of quote, erasure, racial discrimination, manipulation, pay inequality, inequity, tokenism, monetization of black culture and trauma inducing experiences of black artists. There's the letter is on, uh, is, is in the, in the, in the thing. And they're fighting for the BIPOC, which is black indigenous people of color, which is a phrase we did not hear until last week. I don't care what anyone says that was made up last week. (laughs) I don't care what anyone says. BIPOC was not a thing until, uh, uh, June, 2020. (laughs) <laughs> way too way too off brand there off topic uh the letter was signed by people along the lines of uh late night writer amber ruffin 
and Ashley Nicole Black, who was also a writer for late night shows, but now she does a black lady sketch show, Chris Red, uh, Dwayne Perkins, who's a writer as well. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see who else? Went? Lisa Beasley, <laughs> Sam Richardson, uh, Shantira Jackson, Tawny Newsome. So, and then the, and a bunch of others. So the, all these people signed a letter because, uh, we, uh, because the, of the institutional racism there, they want an investigation of everything and they want this done right. Um, you know, you hear about these things happening and, or, you know, if you listen to podcasts, you only hear, you know, whispers of it, but, it's true. It's, this is, this is a real thing. It's, it's kind of like, you know, improv was made by white people and then their friends, uh, who were also white started doing it. And then that was, and then that's how it was kind of built. Not that it was like, not that it started out racist or sexist or anything. It's just, you know, a bunch of white guys said, Hey, this would be fun. And then they did it. And so that's where you get, God, and I hate to point out groups, but that's where you get, <laughs> I hate to point out groups. Uh, and I, and, when I, and each group I name is going to be a group that I th- enjoy their work, but that's where you get groups like the whitest kids, you know, it's just a bunch of white guys, the birthday boys, a bunch of white guys, uh, anybody who wrote for comedy, bang, bang, <laughs> which I was, I only think is a bunch of white guys and maybe, a, uh, one or two women and people of color. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, and it's not saying that those people don't have friends of color or people of color that work with them inside these organizations. It's just that they're not treated the same. And then, you know, over the course of 20 years, the people like this uh, Alexander guy that fosters the harassment and the abuse and the and everything else that comes with uh, not treating people right. So this this is going to be game changing because we're going to see a different style of comedy now out in the world. Uh, one that's more accepting, uh, one that's a little bit more varied and, uh, and more Brown and more women. And I'm excited to see that. Like you can see, if you want to see an example of a story where, uh, where women or where a woman is treated poorly on, uh, for, uh, in comedy, look at, you're the worst. And I think it's the second season where Edgar starts dating, uh, Colette Wolf, I believe that, or Colleen Wolf. I don't know. Whatever. Edgar starts dating this, uh, uh, woman who does, uh, improv and she talks about just being mistreated and that's a real thing. So listen, I gotta go. If you like what you heard here, head on the website, seaplusconomy.com where there are interviews <laughs> And some other stuff. You can follow us on Twitter as, uh, wait, no, no, no. If you want to see a video version of the show, head to youtube.com slash C plus comedy. Where you can see me sitting on the futon in a nice white dress shirt and blue chino pants. Can you see the pants? Yeah, you can. You can follow us on Twitter. Oh, if you also want to see, I just keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm proud of that one. You can also see uh, on youtube.com slash people's comedy a show called News Time, which is our premiere show. I take one story and I, I extrapolate it to the fullest. This week's episode is about uh, TikTok. It's a good episode, really good uh, cold open. At least the song is because I had to make another song. I had to. I made another song for the cold open. Definitely check it out. It's a really good episode. And yeah, check it out. It's about TikTok. Um, and then uh now, if you want to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at C plus comedy, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook, listen to the Constitution. <laughs> like us on Facebook, rate and review the Constitutionals podcast over there on your podcast uh app of choice. Thank you for listening. I love you. Bye.